Hey, Ancestry has rolled out some new tools and some graphics, so we're gonna talk about some of my favorites and some you might not be aware of coming up next. Hey, welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, there is a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that stuff are in the show notes below. There is a handout for this episode. That is for the information access level channel members, the patrons at the happy dance level, and you can find them over at genealogytv.org. Uh, more about that toward the end of the show if you want to get into the details of how to get those handouts. All right, so let's just jump over to the computer and talk about the new tools on Ancestry. Okay, so this is kind of cool. There's some really new little features going on here at the Ancestry tree. And at first glance, you don't really notice it. And quite frankly, there's a lot of new graphics and things going on. You probably have it by now. I think most, at least in the U.S., have gotten some of these new graphics and new tools. So I'm gonna show you how these work, but in the tree view, of course, we're in the tree, right? Let's just quickly review the icons that are already here, and then we're gonna jump into some of the other ones, because I bet you there are some nuances about these icons that you didn't know about. So over here in the left hand, well, let's start up here. Over here on the left hand side, you have the drop down that shows all the trees that you have for your account, right? So you've got your account is tied to several trees. As long as you only have one account and maybe just one tree, that's fantastic. If you have more than one tree, you'll see them in this drop down. All right, now this tool right here is your pedigree view, and that is the view that you are seeing here, okay? This tool is what they call the family view, which is basically turning this on its head, right? It puts me down here in the bottom and then depending on how you have this set, that depends on what you're seeing. So back in the pedigree view, right? We have the home icon, right? The home icon is typically the owner of the tree, but not always, you can change it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Right now, I've got myself set as the home person and you can tell because this is a darker color then all of the other people have a white background. And by the way, your color scheme, you can change your color scheme. This is the one I happen to like. But you can tell the home person in this case is me because of the darker color. Now you can change that. The home person could also be the focus person. What's well, a focus person? We'll talk about that here in a second. So let's pretend we're gonna go work on old Herman Miller Madsen here. We're gonna look at his profile. And then we're going to come back right here. You've got a set of tools. And if you don't see these tools, you can come over to tools and show research tools. And that will add these tools here. See if I turn them off, it might look like that. Turn them back on. It's on. Okay. These view and tree, right? If we go back to view and tree, now he's listed here and he's dark colored versus all of these other white backgrounds. Okay. What's going on here? Well, he is now the focus person, okay? That, that is your new focus person, but that's not the home person. The home person is me because I set it that way in my settings, okay? So let's go on. So we're gonna look at somebody else's profile and we go view and tree. And now she's the focus person. And well, wait a minute, I want to get back. I'm gonna close this. Yeah, okay, there. So I want to get back to Herman. Well, there is a path down here that shows you who the focus person has been. So it started with me as the home person. Then it became Herman Miller Madsen down here. And now it is Marie. So if I want to get back to Herman and make him the focus person again, I can just flip back and forth. Okay. So why is that important? We'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Okay, so let's go, let's goof around again. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go to this person's profile and then we're gonna go back. Okay, we're done doing research over here and then we're gonna view and tree again. So now she is the focus person because her background color is different. So let me show you something about this second button. This is the return button, okay? And if, 
if Herman is our focus person and then we start doing research and we look at different people, instead of using the view and tree, which sets Marie as the focus person, if we come up to this icon, it takes us back to our tree without setting a new focus person. See, Herman is still the focus person. So then we do some other research and we're goofing around and you know, we're doing stuff and I'm not going to click this one because that would change my focus person. I come over here, then I'm going to come down to her. Now look at that. Elma is the focus person. I can, I can hit return. Watch. It's not going to do anything because return is going to take me back to Elma in this view, right? It's just taking me right back to her. But if I was in this view, which is the family view and I'm getting lost, you know, they give you this map over here. But if I'm getting lost, I'm coming down, I'm looking at children, I'm doing all kinds of things. I'm looking here and maybe I turn some other things on. I'm just moving all around the tree. The focus person is actually shown in the map down here. And this is giving you a view of what you're seeing on the screen. But I can return to the focus person by hitting this return button, which is going to take me back to Elma. So I could then click the return button and it brings me back to her in the tree. This return button is very helpful, I think, when you are in the family view, not so much when you're in the pedigree view. So because it's really easy to get lost in your tree, you're, you're going up the line, you're moving around and you're looking at siblings and maybe going up again and you're just all over the tree and you're lost. You say, well, wait a minute, I want to get back to Herman. I can click Herman and it gets me right back to him as the focus person. Now Elma is gone and Herman is now the focus person. Okay, so now let's talk about this next icon. This is one of the new ones, okay? So it says view tree viewing options. Well, if we click on that, watch what happens. We get this side panel that pops out. And so we can turn on and off certain things. Well, nothing's happening. What's going on? Why is nothing happening? I don't get it. Yeah, I do. It's because it took me a minute to figure this out. Uh, it's because we're in the different view. So in this view, nothing really is going to change. You have to be in the family tree view where you see all of the siblings and everything. And then when we hit that little, I call it a stack of papers, but when we hit the relationship labels and, or oh, let's start with always view spouses. We'll start there. So here, you can see where Ellsworth Booth has had several wives and Helen had another husband. If we turn that off, it takes us to just the direct ancestors, okay? But if you'll notice, there is a little arrow here and it's showing that he has siblings. It's not his spouses, but his siblings. So we could open that up and then we can see that he has some siblings and it shows their spouses. The down arrow is going to show the children of each one of these people. Okay. Now we can take this one step further. Oh, look, it says always show spouses. We had turned that off. What happens now? Oh, we get for this particular one, because we opened up that side panel where it says hide siblings. We got spouses and siblings all mixed in here because Julia Fall is his first wife and this is his last wife and I'm not sure who this is. If we want to collapse that down so it doesn't get quite so confusing and then I'm going to turn off the spouses so it doesn't so it's even less confusing and let's turn on relationship labels. So now you can see that it's got me explaining, okay, Constance's great grandparents, right? Shows up here. Now watch what happens before. Remember when we were skipping around the tree and we had that path of people at the bottom. So I'm the focus person, as you can see by the dark color here. Okay. And watch what happens when we jump around the tree. So here we're going to go to Herman's profile. And then we're going to go back to view and tree. And now it has changed the focus person. 
See, I was the focus person before as the home person when it's going to default to me because I'm the home person. But now Herman is the focus person. Where is Herman in the tree? Oh, there he is. He's hiding down here. All right. So the darker color, right? And it's also showing the path down here. He's now the focus person. So now what's interesting is it's showing with that side panel, right? Remember? With relationship line labels turned on, we are now seeing Herman's siblings, Herman's parents, Herman's grandparents. So now we're getting relationship information about the focus person and not just me. Isn't that cool? I kind of like that. One other thing I do want to point out when you are in the pedigree view, I have all of these through lines showing. I could turn them off over here and turn off those if I didn't want to see those icons. I don't have any possible DNA matches to show you uh, that I can show you publicly, but uh, that little icon right there would show you if you had a possible DNA match. In my case, I had already gone and verified everybody, so it wasn't showing. And then, you know, some of the check marks says that it's connected specifically to your tree. Some of the other icons that you might not be familiar with, you're seeing these new flags pop up and this little, almost looks like a bullet point list. This, if you click on this, it shows you the spouses. So the cool part about this is you can turn off and on how many spouses you want to see. So if you want to, you know, kind of maybe you're focused on this couple and you're working, you know, all the records for this person, you can turn off and on exactly what spouses you're going to see. Okay. And then once you do that, that little new symbol goes away. And again, this shows you the siblings for this person. So this is showing you the spouses. This is showing you the siblings. So I promised I would show you how to change the home person if you wanted to. Some people like to use changing a home person for various strategies, which I'm not really going to get into right now. But if you want to learn how to change the home person, you go up to trees and you drop down to create and manage trees. And then you go to the tree that you are working on and go to tree settings. And up here in the upper right corner, you can change the uh, home person. As soon as you do that, you can change it to somebody in your tree. It says browse a list of everyone in your tree. And then uh, as long as this is unchecked, as soon as you start browsing, it'll change and then you would click select. I'm not going to change mine. I just wanted to show you how to do it in case you needed it. So all in all, they've got some new graphics. As you can see, you know, if you don't have an image, the female and male graphics have changed. The leaves have changed. These of course are the hints. So we've got a lot more tools to play with. And especially with this paper icon over here, we have the ability to turn on and off relationships, which I think is rather cool and to be able to change the focus person, which then changes those labels, I think is kind of neat. As promised, I've got some information here about the handouts and then some closing comments. There are three ways you can get the handouts. Now, the first way is to join the channel membership here at the information access level channel membership on the YouTube channel, and then go to the community tab and you'll find the posts that have the handout links in there. All you have to do is follow the link and download the handouts. Okay, now the second way is over at Patreon. Now at Patreon, if you're at the happy dance level or higher, uh, you can get the handouts. Those come directly to you in an email every time we announce the new video that has a handout with it. You'll also get early release with that membership. All right, and then the third way is just to go over to genealogytv.org and click on the handouts tab and you can find all the handouts there for individual purchase. So uh, I hope that was helpful. The handouts really do support the channel and for that, I thank you. Well, I hope that was helpful. Ancestry, I have to hand it to them. They're always coming out with some new stuff and you know, so kudos to them. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you like the episode, give me a thumbs up and I would appreciate it. Uh, there are more videos on the screen for your binge watching pleasure. I'll see you in the next one.